we're really excited to have our next presentation, uh, Sammy Mackinen, who is, works for the National Land Survey of Finland and has been working on the Ascari software development geopartals for some most of the time that it's been available as an open source project. Uh, Sammy is one of the core maintainers of the software and has been working on the software for the longest time, basically. And I'll turn it over to you, Sammy, to give us the overview of uh, the state of Ascari. Okay, thank you, Eddie, and welcome from, for everyone for joining. So, Oscar, uh, this is the wrap up for a couple of years since the last Phosphor G in Bucharest. And I'll start with a, a short intro. So, it all started as a national geoportal for Finland. It looks like this today, it didn't look that like this when we started out. But the main thing is the map is the main main thing you see on the screen. You have some tools on the left side bar like search and map layer listing legends. You can pu uh, publish maps for for other websites, and you have some tools also on the left side and also on top of the map. So it started as the, as the national geoportal and the decision was made to open source it like over 10 years ago, I think. Um, and what we've been doing since is, is we've been, while adding new functionalities and, and improving the existing ones and rewriting the software to be more modern, we've been adding all sorts of uh, hooks and plugins and making it so that it's not uh, like a code dump that it's hard to use for others. So we've been uh, improving it on, on that, that front a lot. And today we are, or we've been for a couple of years already in a position that, that uh, there are companies doing business and and selling oscari based solutions and we also get contributions back to to the software so what we have is a server that is uh, coded in java it's built with maven uh, front end javascript that is currently built with webpack uh, we have a we use postgres sql uh, as a database, it's it's not um, mandatory. You don't need it, but if you want to use the functionalities that allow end users to save data, uh, uh, vector features basically on on the on your Oscar instance, uh, you will need a post GIS as well. So that's that's kind of the working combo, and we use Redis for caching and and other stuff as well and what separates Oscari for uh, some of the other similar products is that we uh, you use it on top of an existing spatial data infrastructure structure so uh, it's not something that you import all your geospatial data into and and it doesn't really host host the content it, it's more of a register or or a geo portal that pulls data from other sources and and you can see how they interact. Um, after after ten years, there's been a lot of changes. Mm, uh, today, I decided to label that we have a collection of application components that you can use to create create. Um, Web, web mapping software, basically. We have APIs and extension points on multiple levels. So it's kind of hard to hard to pinpoint what, what Oscari is exactly, but we have the server side code in, in GitHub in Oscari server repository. And we have a sample application, sample server extension repository showing how you can use those uh, library kind of parts to create your own own geo portal or web mapping software. A similar structure is used on the front end. You have uh, the base 
components that that we offer in Oscari frontend. There's also additional components available in a contrib repository next to it. And we have a sample application repository, uh, which is basically a template repository that shows how you can use the code in Oscari frontend to create that web mapping software. And with all the modifications that you, that you can do uh, when building your own application, this is one example. So we are also uh, maintaining the Arctic SDI Geo portal, which is powered by Oscar. It's the same same code that it's that is running on the National Geo portal, but it has some uh, different functionalities on the on the tools here less tools on toolbar and some additional tools on the on the map so you can customize it this is one one way of customizing it and you can have application specific login integrations and user data stores basically uh, so so as i mentioned application components one of the components is, of course, the map, and and this is kind of a cool, cool proof of concept that you can switch around these uh, different modules. In here, we have uh, um, replaced the open layers based 2D map with a cesium based 3D map, and all the other uh, components and functionalities still work the same and, and interact with it, each other. So that's possible. So what we've been up to. Uh, in Bucharest, we have introduced a, a new client rewrite, basically, for all the vector sources that you can read into or pull into Oscar, basically, for the user to use. Uh, it was introduced in the 1.52 version. Uh, so people could or users that had their own Oscar instance could try it out, uh, make comments and report any bugs that we might have. Uh, if you in the next version, it was made the default engine or client for for um, integrating with vector sources. Um, this what this means is basically if you have an existing Oscar instance and you and you update it, you will still get the old old client. And but if you install a fresh fresh instance, you will get the new client as as default. And we did a forced migration on the next version, so we can keep our sanity and not maintain two implementations at the same time. The old implementation was more 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 concerned about getting uh, vector features on the screen for older browsers and and as today the end end users use more powerful devices and and browsers so as you saw on the open layers presentation you can do a lot with vector features so so this was needed um, additional cleanup and migration for for any like VFS endpoint metadata that we store on, on Oscari. So basically the URL and credentials and every other config that we have for such sources uh, could then be migrated after we only had the one one client to, to clean up the database and, and make the make the mm, storing of the data more more clean. So as you saw on the open layers presentation, you can do a lot of with vector features. And we quickly realized that as the old, old client was uh, rendering basically images, binary raster images for the, from the vectors using SLD for the front end on our side. Uh, now that we bring the actual vector features to the browser, we we need to step up our game 
and what we what we uh, provide for that is that you can localize the property names for for all the property data features you can do a describe feature type kind of request that where you get the value types of the properties and the property names themselves and you can have other customization options like showing different properties for different language and user languages and stuff like that we already have had some of these on the old old client as well but now it's really nice that we combine them to a different or or new endpoint api endpoint and you don't for getting the features and getting this this metadata it it doesn't really the developer doesn't need to care whether they come from from a web feature service one or two or an ogc api features endpoint it's 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 um, standardized the way the data is is moved to the front end also as we no longer could you use the sld's to render the features on the browser uh, we needed to improve the styling uh, that geostyler presentation looked looked good I, i'll have to take a look at it in more detail after this um, you can also uh, you can get the features as a geo json or for more styling options you can also we also provide means to get the features as vector tiles so they are pulled from the vector source by whatever endpoint and written out as vector tiles for the front end so you can use the mapbox style to to make additional styling options and we included a um, functionality that you can also provide filters for the for the vector sources yeah, so so you can filter out some of the features you don't want from an endpoint and or or some of the property properties of those features uh, features to so to reduce the network load and and stuff like that okay so we had a 2.0 release it's um it wasn't a big flashy user interface rewrite it was more of a semantic versioning type of notification to users that host their own oscari instances because um, upgrading the oscari applications is, is has been very easy for for many years now and and this this uh, uh, we needed to upgrade some libraries like the JTS uh, and a flyve DP that had major API changes and we wanted to signal the the users that are hosting Oscari that they need to do some manual work on the update and we took a lot of advantage from from this we renamed all the maven artifacts since the users need to do some manual manual work we we went all in on on it and provided a nice migration guide what they need to do but now we don't have like different group ids for for basically artifacts on the same same repository and software uh, we had our own own uh, database in it, initialization scripts that we could also clean up we we added some code that detect, detects if we if the user is migrating from an older version or installing a new instance which we do a different kind of migration on the initial initial clean db scenario but the database is now fully created using the flyway db which makes it nice and we can use this in in unit tests and uh, it just makes life easier we improve the helpers that the users can use to uh, 
input the initial data on their applications. So basically, if you register what layers you want to have on the on the geo portal, it the configuration goes through the same code as if the user had used the user interface to add those layers. So so there's no longer conflicts or it, things not working the same way if you're doing it programmatically or or with the UI. And we got rid of the old database library, I, Ibatis. Uh, we are now using Mubatis. And we got, did a whole bunch of renaming of the DP tables. So they are also consistent like the Maven artifacts. So new, new features, we, are, we added cool support for server clustering, mainly using Redis. So we can store user sessions in, in Redis. Uh, we use the Spring, Spring framework for that. And we also got a contribution for the Amazon Web Services version of Redis that it works there as well. Um, the cluster nodes can synchronize their cache, mainly the flushes of the cache. Uh, we added health and status checkpoints, so so you can monitor how how the nodes are doing, and you can change log level programmatically. So it's throughout the cluster, so so it's easier to debug things in production. Uh, one of the cool things we did on the front end was a user interface for for scattered time series data. Um, the the map is basically fetched from a VMST interface and the timeline and the dots on it represent the years where if when the user is looking at a certain location, which, which years have photos on on that location. And, and when the user, user um, moves the map, we fetch the timelines from a vector source, basically an OGC API features endpoint and we also needed to add a hook to customize the, the when the user clicks the map to show the for this particular layer how how the get feature info, info response is rendered basically so so that's a nice hook as well so this was big news we we did a bit bit of um media campaign and we hit the national main news in Finland and in, we got a bit of new users, uh, a spike as you might say. So we needed to start thinking about performance in in in, in earnest and, and we found that one of the main things we we could do for performance is uh, we ha we have a lot of layers on the on the Chia portal and and Starting to look at it, it took two hour, uh, two sorry, two seconds to load the listing, and and that's that's way too much. It's not apparent for the end user because it's a it, it's downloaded on the or loaded on the background, but but either way, so why not cache it? it, it it's most mostly the same layers for all the users, and we got it to. A, much better response times, basically, but it's still, it's still 300 milliseconds. Still feels like a lot, and and well, basically, we discovered that three quarters of the of the data was coverage data that we do stuff because <laughs> because um, the Arctic SDI geo portal basically. And and we realized that we don't need that coverage data when for the layer listing. So so we got a real nice performance boost there. Uh, so it wasn't something that we planned on making the the make the layer listing go back um, big, but but it's something that when you add more layers and and we needed to interpolate some points for the coverage data for for the Arctic SDI Chia portal, it, it all builds up for, uh, well, nothing nice. Uh, we ident identified more performance changes that we, we made. So VMTS layers had their capabilities loaded to, 
to the front end as XML, we we did a lot of streamlining for it and got just a tile matrix set part extra. Uh, extracted from the XML for, for the front end, and it reduces a lot of network traffic at, as well. We did a front end layer styling improvements, and we have some other ideas uh, of what we want to do in the future that are not not done yet. I'm running out of time, so I'm, I'm, I'm running these last slides. Uh, for logging, we did, we have a lot of logging improvements for for hosting Oscari. You get a less lot less noise on the logs. You can change the log levels at runtime. Run uh, you have uh, we have a new audit log, so whenever something is written, you get a, a log for that. We identify when we make requests for services. So the OGC APIs can identify its, its Oscari from a certain domain making these requests. And um, more options for customization. Uh, as I mentioned, the feature data can be customized per layer and renders added per property. Um, I'll skip the RPC part. And as a lot of other projects as well, we needed to think a alternative to Travis CI and we opted out for opted for GitHub Actions. Uh, the React.js um, migration is continuing. We, uh, we've done a lot of progress with it on it and to improve the e unboxing experience of Oscari, we, we no longer need GDAL for having all the functionalities that installed next to Oscari to have all the functionality that we provide. Yeah, that's that's about it. I think I'm running out of time. Oh, that was great, Sammy. Thank you for the quite a comprehensive overview. Um, we have a we have a question uh, from the audience that uh, actually is pertinent to a lot of presentations, but it particularly as one that is aggregating as Oscari, which as a framework and platform, which is also relying on other great open source libraries, is it difficult to be up to date with all these dependencies being updated all the time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a work. Uh, we have all the, all the front end libraries that we now use NPM to download and, 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 register and on on the server side we use maven so so it's not not that bad but but yeah we have a lot of lot of libraries that we we need to update and all the time and and basically with the new java versions coming up we i think we need to start removing some of those those dependencies as well mm. can you let's see i think we, um, what 3D formats do you support in your new, here we go. What 3D formats do you support in your new viewer? Uh, it's, it's 3D tiles. Yeah, it's, it's CCM mm -hmm. out, out of the box. Well, whatever CCM can do it. It's... Okay. Uh, one question I had is what, what can um, Oscari users look for in the next few releases? What's really on your roadmap that you want to call out again, just to sum up? Mm -hmm. um, so so performance improvements is one thing for sure. And another one is is we, we are trying to make the, or uh, yeah, update the user interface. Basically mm -hmm. we are building on, on migrating from jQuery to React and doing some mobile improve, improvements for mobile users as well. So those are the two big things, I think. Excellent. Well, we're right on time. I'll just call everyone's attention to the links that uh, Sammy has shared with us for ways that you can contribute to, collaborate with, or use Ascari. So thanks so much, Sammy. and. Uh, 
hopefully we will see you in person at a Phosphor G event sometime in the near future. Yeah, I hope that's what I hope that that's well. All right. Thanks so much. We'll Thank be uh, audience will be back at the top of the hour and um, uh, we'll see you then for the uh, state of stack. <laughs>